What's up, Internet? My name is Ori. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. Today is Wednesday, October 18th, day number 78 inside the Big Brother house. Veto episode was last night uh, with two competitions that we have to go over. Uh, plus, what happened on the live feeds yesterday? We got a lot to get into, so let's just kind of jump into it with the episode. And one thing that I did kind of like about this episode is they did really kind of show how things uh, went and not the, oh, Sari made this all happen narrative that I keep seeing kind of floating around from people that have been watching the feeds along with us. Sari, don't get me wrong, is playing a great social game right now. She's really kind of built herself back up into the game, into a spot where she's aligned with a lot of people in the house. But she didn't really make any of the things that happened this week happen. Uh, they really start showing that, yes, uh, Jag, as the Invisible HOH, nominated Felicia and Sari, didn't want to go after Corey and America. But with some of the things that have played out with America going to blue, saying way too much, uh, which has been a flaw of hers this entire season. And it's a shame to say it's a flaw because what she's doing is she's going to people and she's telling them the God honest truth. Like she's not lying to these people when she goes to them and tells them, hey, you're the real target. Like the people you think you're working with are coming after you. She she did the same thing that she did to Blue this week that she did the Jag weeks ago about Blue saying blue keeps going to jared telling her everything that you're telling him everything you're saying she did the same thing to blue this week about jag and matt and it just keeps coming back and biting her in the butt because they don't believe her when they tell her when she tells them these people are coming after you they they just don't want to believe what she's saying and that's what really kind of got things into motion on top of that once we get into the competitions how they played out and who won veto really is what pushed everything that happened this week to move forward. So I did like that the show at least acknowledged that and didn't just push like, oh, Sari did this all, which is, again, the narrative I've been seeing from a lot of people, and I, I don't understand why they think that. Uh, let's get into the competitions because I have some thoughts. Uh, first off, the way the first competition was set up was really cool. It was uh, the classic spinning comp where everybody's standing on a disc Sometimes they have them sitting on the disc, this uh, iteration with them standing uh, and then smacking into uh, something as they spin around. Uh, this is a competition that looked really cool. It's a great competition that I love to see happen uh, whenever they do it. But it's made for the feeds. Like this is a competition that's supposed to be on the feeds, not just an episode. Like, yeah, it's fun to watch it on the episode, see how it all plays out and like what happened, maybe what you were missing what people were thinking like why did somebody drop were they throwing it were they they really trying did they slip like what happened and i'd like to see that on the episode but i like to watch these competitions play out on the feeds it's the big thing that makes big brother big brother is that some of the game we get to watch live take place and what would have been something like hey game changing for the 25th season you get to watch this endurance veto competition take place on feeds. How awesome would that have been? We got to see stuff like that take place on BB over o OTT over the top uh, that they did, where you got to actually watch uh, different competitions take place and, and things happen uh, as I'm knocking stuff off my desk over here. Uh, but we didn't get to see this. And that would have been really cool for, you know, for the 25th season doing something big. Show us this competition. Don't show us the second the competition. If you want to keep that one secret, that's fine. Show us this one. And anyone who says, oh, well, they had it on the street. They couldn't do the live feed setup. They could have done the live feed setup. Listen, as someone who just does this type of thing, if I wanted to, I could set something up where I could be going live from this room, but not be in this room. Like, they, like it's not that difficult to set these things up. And they are a large production company that has the technology and the ability to set up a remote broadcast from that location and live feed it onto the feeds like it's not impossible it could have been done but they didn't it feels kind of lazy and that kind of gets us into the second competition but before we get to that let's talk about how this one 
played out. Uh, pretty much, Felicia fell first. Uh, not really that much of a surprise with Sari falling uh, second afterwards. Uh, but both of them, you know, they did, you know, their job. We have really no clue on really how long this competition actually went. Doesn't seem like it went on for too long, especially seeing how uh, short the second competition was. Uh, it seems like this one probably was maybe around like at most like two, three hours, probably total. Uh, and uh, Sari and Felicia, they both fall first. Uh, that's not what got them the punishments, though. Uh, and then after that, we saw, uh, I think it was Corey, Matt, then America fall. America saying she threw it, which really, it doesn't matter because it ended up being that Blue didn't win this veto. But interesting to hear that she threw it because if Blue had won that veto and it was America's direct result of throwing the competition, which gave her the veto, that would really have made this a very bad week for America and been the complete cause of everything that's been happening. Uh, but she did say she was like, now oh, it's time for me to drop. And it ended up being Blue and Jag being the last two up with Jag outlasting Blue, winning the first power of veto. The second comp, though, uh, was a little different. And I got to say, I, I like that it was different, but it felt super lazy where they're like, we want to have two power of vetoes this week. Uh, how can we do it? Uh, well, what if the winner of the first one then has to hang on uh, and they have to guess how long they'll hang on? What? <laughs> it just it feels so lazy uh, and, and just thrown together. Uh, like, I, I get that this was part of, like, whatever the twist was. And they were like, oh, we can do, like, a double thing here. But it just feels like, huh? Like, this is what you're doing for it? Uh, like, have it be the last two people that were hanging on, maybe. That makes a lot of sense, right? The last two up there both get a veto. Why not just do it that way? Why do you have to do it this way? I guess it gives people uh, a more fair shot, like uh, Suri and Felicia. Like, if you can't hang on, you get the double shot where it's something a little bit more, like, random, where you have to guess how long they're hanging on for. But it just feels weird that they did it this way. I don't know. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking about it. As far as how it goes, uh, Jag had to hold on. They were giving him uh, 500 bucks for every 15 seconds he held on. So he had an incentive to hang on. Which, by the way, if they ever do this in future iterations and you are working with the person who's hanging, have it planned out in, in pre like previously. Like, I'm dropping in one second. I, I'm holding and I'm dropping immediately. Put down one second. You win the veto. It's very, they can never do this veto again. Like this, this competition can never be done again because it's so gameable where it's just like, yeah, bro, just drop in one second. I'm going to put one second. So it's, it's literally so gameable. They didn't know it was happening beforehand. So there was no way of really knowing what they were guessing. Uh, I'm assuming they didn't even tell Jag what they were guessing uh, until it happened. I don't know, but it seems very, very gameable uh, for this competition. Uh, but Blue, she kind of nails her guess. Blue was within 4.31 seconds because she ended up putting 0.69. So she ended up being below five seconds to, ha to what the actual time was for Jag. Just incredible. Uh, Suri and Felicia put like 600 seconds or something like that. So they ended up getting the punishment. Because uh, they were the furthest away. Uh, Sarig having uh, the superhero costume that she has to uh, quick change into and do different tasks that Big Brother tells her to do. Uh, and Felicia getting 24 hours of solitary confinement. Uh, we ended up getting highlights of both of those, which were really just meh. I, uh, kind of pointless. Uh, and then we also saw how quickly Matt and Jag uh, started to push the double blind side of Corey in America just simply because well now that blue won a veto you got to switch the targets up and if you're going to put one of them on up up anyway you might as well make sure one of them goes and you get your hands super bloody if you're going to get them bloody why not get them super bloody right um I will say though I I was a little bothered by the fact that they showed things slightly out of order like they showed the conversations that he had with everybody telling him like hey I'm the invisible HOH and I'm doing this now. But he told Blue before Felicia. Felicia was actually one of the last ones to find out. Felicia Shone is one of the first ones to find out. 
Uh, but he told everyone else before Felicia because she was in uh, solitary confinement. And they had the time in the episode to do what I think really happened, which we really didn't get to see on the feeds. All of this played out. It turned into it's going to be a blind side on Corey in America. Everybody finds out except Corey in America and Felicia because she's in solitary. Sari, knowing that Felicia's going to be coming out of there like a bat out of hell. Like Felicia, we all kind of assumed was getting ready to like, she was going to come out there, Dan funeral level of like, okay, this is what's happening. I'm going to say this and this and this. But she didn't have to because the plan was already in motion. So what I believe, and again, we didn't see it happen, was as soon as Felicia came out of solitary, Sari grabbed her and was like, hey, shush, sh sh shut your mouth. Don't say a word. Everything's good go talk to jag right like i feel like they could have shown that and they and maybe that didn't happen right? maybe i'm i'm making something up that didn't happen in my head and on the feeds uh just because we didn't see it but like i feel like that's probably what happened because otherwise because felicia came out very calm when she had her chat with jag that was kind of the first part that we got to really see so I, I think there was more that we didn't get to see. And I wish they would have shown that a little bit more of Felicia coming out and being like ready to go. But then having to go talk to Jag and be like, oh, the plan's already changed. Like, Felicia, relax. Uh, but they end the show on a cliffhanger. We don't even see whether or not the vetoes uh, are used and who goes up as the replacement nominees. We all know exactly what happened. Uh, I'm not showing it here just for the spoiler's sake. But we're about to jump into what happened on the live feeds. Uh, so if you don't want the spoilers from that, uh, now's your time to click away. But as far as the episode goes, it was extra long for really no reason other than the show, The Punishments, uh, kind of the similar thing they did with the last extra long episode we had this season. It feels like there was really no point to making it extra long other than the show, The Punishments, uh, which, yeah, just completely pointless. Uh, but, uh, Overall, I hate that they're doing the cliffhangers, especially then when we know what is actually happening. It's only for the casual fans, which I know we are only just a small percentage of the overall fans. Most fans are actually the casual fans. If you aren't aware, most people don't watch the feeds. <laughs> most people are just watching the episodes. Uh, but yeah, it, it, I don't know. Overall, not a great episode, not a terrible episode, but could have been better. Could have been a lot better. Uh, but yeah, let's jump into what happened on the live feeds. Here's your little spoiler warning because I'm about to change the board over to the actual uh, feeds uh, info. And uh, boom, yes, uh, Corey in America did go up on the block. We've been talking about it for the past uh, two updates uh, about everything that's going on. As far as what happened on the feeds itself yesterday, not a whole lot, but we do have a few things to go over. Uh, for example, they got the smaller table. Uh, every year, they always have the big, huge table in the beginning of the season. Eventually. It gets smaller uh, to more of uh, the eight-person table. And then eventually they even get like a, a tiny little table, uh, which I don't even know if we'll actually even get this year because we're, we're kind of running out of weeks and there's still a lot of people left. And like, I think there's going to be like a double or something coming up here soon. Who knows? Uh, but since they just put that table in, like, would they even bother putting the smaller table in? I don't know anymore. Uh, we did have America get somewhat back into uh, the game, though. Uh, yesterday, she spent a lot of time in, uh, not yesterday, but the, on nominations day, she spent a lot of time in bed, not wanting to talk to uh, Matt or Jag, and then eventually getting out later. Yesterday, she still had her moments of sulking with Corey, but she was kind of getting back in the game mode a little bit, having chats with uh, Blue, where once again, she tried to tell her, like, you can't trust Matt and Jag. They were targeting you this week. Like, you gotta watch out. And Blue basically saying, like, yeah, I'm playing the game. Mind your business. Like, she did not want to hear it pretty much. And was like, we're still good. Like, we're going to be good after this. We're friends. Like, we're going to go, uh, you know, have a good time out in the city and stuff like that. But, you know, it is what it is. Like, I'm playing my game. You're playing yours. Uh. It is what it is. And so Blue just pretty much not wanting to hear any of it. Uh, other than that, we did have things like uh, Sari having to do more superhero punishments. Like she had to spend like over two hours in the pool. Uh, she had to do like 100 laps in the backyard. They were just having her do random, random stuff uh, throughout the day. Uh, but mainly, we kind of end up in the same spot we were uh, just th since the, the blind side really started. We've got uh, Matt and Jag, and actually, we can, I guess, pull up the alliance chart here. I've kind of 
reorganized it a little bit now that uh we are into this new week uh, i also had bowie still listed as hoh uh so i fixed that thank you uh for those who had pointed that out as well uh but this is kind of a good way of of showing it i think and this is kind of how i see how the house is set up at the moment obviously you got Corey and america nominated up top there uh america i think will end up drifting over to uh, Suri and Felicia and kind of being along with them and ended up being very close uh, to especially Suri. Like Suri's really doing work to lock in America uh, at this point uh, once Corey's gone. And this isn't something new to Suri's playbook. She's very good at taking a showmance, getting rid of uh, the boyfriend and bringing the girlfriend over to her side. She's done it before. Uh, so that kind of seems to be what's happening there. We have Blue, who honestly is kind of in the middle. Like, yes, she's aligned with Suri and Felicia, but she still wants to work with Matt and Jag. Kind of same with Bowie, though. Bowie is closer to uh, Matt and Jag. And I think how this will really kind of uh, fall once Corey is uh, evicted, Bowie's going to shift way more for uh, uh, Matt and Jag, and it'll be closer to them. Blue is going to shift more into that middle position and America is going to kind of slot back into where that blue spot is right now. Uh, so you'll have those three ladies in the middle uh, with Bowie, Blue and, and America just kind of on like a kind of a spectrum between Matt and Jag and Felicia and Suri. But the weird thing is it also is kind of a full circle <laughs> because you also have on either ends working relationships with Matt and Jag and Suri and Felicia. So it's it's all interconnected. But overall, I feel like everything's aiming towards Matt and Jag uh, as the next two that really have to be the ones to go on the, on the block. But it really depends on who wins HOH. If it's America, Suri, Felicia, I think it's a guarantee. Matt and Jag, those are your nominees. Obviously, if Matt and Jag win HOH, because Jag can play for this HOH, uh, it will end up being somebody like America, maybe Felicia up on the block as their nominees, because they don't want to get too much blood on their hands. Uh, if it was Bowie, I think she would do something similar, but she might actually go for Suri, uh, since she's wanting to be, she wanted to go after Suri during her HOH, but now also kind of seems like he's trusting Suri a little bit more this week. Uh, again, I still think Bowie would maybe want to get out Suri and Felicia uh, just from the the idea of like, well, they could be people that Matt and Jag would want to take over me. If Bowie's thinking about this smartly, she could also just think about it petty uh, and want to take them out from the red uh, blind side still. So who knows? Who knows? Uh, but it's going to be very interesting to see who wins HOH this week because it's really going to change how things go. I'm kind of pulling for Suri, Felicia, and America now at this point. Because even Blue, if Blue won HOH, I don't think she takes a shot at Matt and Jag. I think she puts up Bowie in America. I think that's the shot she takes. So I think the, the people we really want to see win HOH for the most entertainment uh, and to possibly cause the most uh, uh, excitement. Because if you don't break up Matt and Jag now at this point, you're in trouble. You're going to be in big, big trouble uh, moving forward because you're going to have to beat them in something. And if you can't beat them in an HOH, you can't get them out. Like, you just can't. They're not going to put each other up, even if they're forced to. Like, the first time they'll be forced to actually do that uh, will probably be around uh, Final Four, where, you know, whoever wins veto has full control and, like, they don't even have a choice on who they have to put up as the replacement. Even Final Five, like, there will be options, right? So, it, I, I don't know. It's going to be weird uh, to see how this all plays out. But let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. Uh, thank you guys so much uh, for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below about how things are playing out. Uh, who would you like to see win HOH uh, moving forward into this next week? Uh, what do you think uh, the house dynamics are going to play out like? Uh, will Bowie kind of be in the middle will blue go more towards mountain jag instead of serene felicia is she just playing along with ev with everyone kind of saying she's with matt and jag but will be willing to take that shot 
Let me know what you guys are thinking. Send in the comments down below. Uh, once again, if you are new here, hit that subscribe button. You like this video, hit that like button, hit that notification bell. You'll never miss a video. You'll never miss a stream. We will have a live stream tomorrow morning at 7.30. Uh, so make sure you're coming on out for that. If you can't make it out for the actual live, you can watch it uh, after the fact. And we'll have like chapters set up where we start off with the update, just like we do uh, every morning, talking about uh, what happened on the live feeds uh, the night before. Uh, and then we'll move into other stuff. I want to talk about uh, the Traders Canada. We'll talk about Survivor the night before. Uh, the Amazing Race. I still need to watch it, but uh, the House of Villains, I want to talk about that tomorrow. So uh, let me know what you guys are thinking uh, in the comments down below. Thank you guys all again so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you, and I will see you next time.